Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, with a release update video for the Bailiwiki free module, the Bailiwiki Maps Pack. Before we dive into it, I want to welcome everyone to the Bailiwiki channel. We teach everyday DMs how to combine technology and art to create truly amazing experiences for their players. We also create scenes and modular systems you can use without any setup, like the scenes we're highlighting now. If you're a DM that likes to wow your players and you're using platforms like Foundry, VTT, and Dungeon Draft, then you're in the right place. Subscribe to our channel to keep up with our content, or consider subscribing to our Patreon. Not only do you support the channel, but you also get access to the premium versions of everything we've ever made, like the free module that we're going through right now. The first scene that we'll go through that we've added to the Bailiwiki Maps pack is the Neighborhoods 01 scene. In this particular scene, we make use of the facade system that was introduced in the latest premium module from Bailiwiki, the modular city system, district number one. These buildings are all facades. They are roofs that help bring in life to sections of a city that you can populate with these buildings that perhaps the interiors don't have interest to your players, but you wanna make the city feel alive. These facades are an excellent way to flesh out areas of your city or town that have extra locations for players to explore but that you maybe don't want to have fully explorable interiors for. These are very robust options that allow you to flesh out areas or add visual interest to a scene where you might only have one or two explorable buildings but still want players to be able to walk around. We can see that there are some great opportunities for maybe an encounter where someone gets ambushed in an alleyway or there is a chase scene of some sort, maybe going after someone that the party has been on the tail of and investigating. And we have elevation aspects here, such as the bridge and elevated areas for the uh, other parts of the neighborhood. We can also see that there's these smoke controls over here to the side. And if we have our token controls selected and click on one of these tiles, we'll get a pip. And if we go back to our overhead tiles, we'll see that now the smoke has become animated. So you can toggle between static and animated versions of the smoke using Monk's active tile triggers. Alternatively, you can select the tile, right click it, and select manually activate, rather than clicking on the tile with your token tool selected. Both of these are going to highlight the currently active switch and play an audio cue for you, letting you know that you have successfully switched over between the static and animated modes. Additionally, these are random, so if you want to swap between the static options a couple of times to randomize it, you can continue to activate the static trigger here a couple of times. Similar to our first scene, the next scene is the Neighborhoods 02 scene from the Bailiwiki Modular City District number one. And this one is a wintry scene, and it features some of the snowy assets and another style of roof here. There's also some other elevation changes, such as the scaffolding, to be able to climb up onto the roofs of the buildings here. Again, this is using a facade system that incorporates an elevated area to add some interest to the navigation here, and we can further play off of that by using the scaffolding to bring our players or adversaries onto the roofs for a rooftop chase or escape. Once again, we also have those smoke effects that can be toggled between animated and static. And again, clicking on that is going to swap them over for the entire scene, and we will hear that little chime. If you're interested in seeing how this works, using Monk's active tile triggers, you can select the tiles and open them up. And we can see that we use tagger to tag them, and then we're able to alter it to set the colors of the active and inactive triggers, play that notification sound, which you can use for your own triggers if you want an audio cue, and then we can set the image to the animated version on our animated tile, and then you'll notice something clever that we kind of do here is rather than altering that tile itself, we're going to trigger it, and we can see that for the static versions, all of these tiles are tagged the same way, and all have the action that they are going to cycle between one of these static images. So when we activate them, that's how we're getting to the static version. The final scene is the incredible icebound galleon that has been introduced. 
If you tuned in to Bailey Wiki's interview with the Tropos, the founder of Foundry, you will have seen a little bit of a showcase here. Atropos took the dungeon draft files for the original Bailiwicky Galleon and added a murderous and icebound ruined version of the Galleon for a Rime of the Frost Maiden campaign. And he was kind enough to send this artwork back over to Bailiwicky, and he has then gone through and brought this to life as a multi-level explorable map for everyone to enjoy as a celebration for us hitting 2,000 patron subscribers. As you navigate through the Icebound Galleon, you see holes that are you know, clearly representative of the damage done to the ship over time while it's been trapped in the ice, and we see evidence of the struggle and perhaps murder mysteries within the ship, and we can navigate through it to see all the different levels and all of the interesting details throughout it. And this is a, just a great showcase of what can happen when dungeon draft files and artwork are made widely available to people for being able to make their own versions. If you are interested in using some dungeon draft files to make things your own, it's really easy to take a base from someone else and customize it. And it's one of the reasons why we really enjoy using Dungeon Draft and promote people picking up that particular art program a lot. It's very easy to adapt things for your own campaigns and really flesh things out. We're rounding out the tour here on the Galleon. We're going to be making our way down into the bilge or the lower level of the ship. And then we'll be heading back up topside to check out the final parts of the upper deck and this forward navigation area. And we can see there's this hole in the main deck where we can see our friend down below. And just like on the multi-level version of the galleon that's in a more pristine shape, we can uh, climb up into the crow's nest to get a bird's eye view of the rest of the ship and the surrounding area. And we can continue climbing on the back side of the ship to reach the poop deck and the quarter deck above the captain's quarters and visit the captain's quarters themselves. Again, really great attention to detail here from Atropos, adding in lots of great touches indicating a battle that took place here or some other kind of mystery and giving this really nice frosted over look while adding some suspense and some grunge to the galleon. I've turned the lights up a bit so that it's easier to see as we're going to go through with our levels UI pulled up to view all the different levels of the ship here. At the topmost level we can see the sails on the galleon, and we have all decks where we can see basically the top-down view of the entire ship, and we're going to work our way down from here. Using this levels UI is where you can drag in and drop tokens at the different levels automatically without having to navigate them to the stairs or adjust their height individually. It's also where when you're running an encounter or a session here, you can hop to those levels to view your players. A couple other notes is you'll notice that this grid is pretty dark. That's been done intentionally because our intended darkness here is actually going to be 0.8. So that is the darkness level if you want to have the exact same look shown here in the video and as you pull it out of the box, so to speak. Some other important notes are we have these monks active tile triggers over here in the margins and they are used to toggle the illumination on and off. And you'll see that when you click on it, it will flip and we can turn off our interior illumination. And just like those other tiles, we can right click and manually activate it. And again, it'll switch back to that lever in the rightmost position to indicate that it is on. And switch it to the left to turn off this moonlight, which is going to make it uh, darker at night if it's off. So that's up to you if you want that ambiance. And we can also turn off the ambient noise. If we select our token here again, you'll notice that we hear absolutely nothing while it is off. Like the other effects, we can flip the switch back to on and we can hear that ambient noise again and hear the howling winds or trapped out here on the ice bound galley. You may want to turn some or all of these effects off depending upon how you're running the session. It's all up to you. 
and that is going to conclude our walkthrough for the latest update to the Bailiwiki Maps Pack, an absolutely free module available on the Foundry Virtual Tabletop add-on modules browser, and also on the Forge Bazaar. If you're interested in the premium versions of these maps or any of the other maps that we've put out, check out patreon.com forward slash bailiwiki to learn more there. We want to thank Tropo so much for joining Bailiwiki on his latest interview and also for sending us the artwork for the Icebound version of the Galleon. We of course also want to thank our amazing patrons who are now 2,000 strong and we have added the Icebound Galleon as a thank you to all of you for supporting us. We couldn't do what we do without you. This has been Zephyr for the Bailiwiki channel. Thanks so much for watching and thank you again for your support. Have a good one.